Welcome to Tracks from Abroad. My name is Jesse McDougall, and today we have the privilege of speaking to Ndu Mokhtar. And this is a band that came to Toronto last night, and I was able to go to their show and see their whole performance. They opened for Parquet Courts. But it was just a really fantastic time last night, so I'm glad I got to see that. Mdu, welcome to Tracks from Abroad. Hey, thank you for having us. Thank you Very so happy much. to have you guys. Um, let's see here. So I, I wanted to talk about the show last night. Again, it was tremendous. It was one of the biggest venues I've ever been to. A lot of people. And how was it for you? It was good. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I really loved the crowd. It was awesome. They clubs, young generation have a lot of energy, and then like that help us. Mm -hmm. You see, and then yeah, the sound was good too. I I love when the place like it's uh, some comfortable place. It's like to be to gonna give me like right to open my my pelvis and then play what I need like free freedom to play yeah. and uh, to to play that. That yesterday I have that feeling. I'm just do whatever I need, and then the crowd appreciate. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's great. How much of your show is ad libbed? How much do you just make you sort of make up and go with the flow? And how much is a an actual set that you're playing? I played it. Uh, yeah, it's it's depends some time. It's uh, one I see like uh, the crowd love the solo. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna give them what. <laughs> what they can what they want yeah yeah yeah, yeah what, what they want of course it's what i'm doing i'm just looking for the crowd what make them happy and then i'm just gonna do what they need mm -hmm. because i am there for them to make them happy i can tell you with certainty the crowd was very happy with your performance everybody was clapping and it was i thought the lights were amazing i thought it was all really great so thank you again for that um, I want to ask you now, you're going to Montreal, and what is it like, the life of a touring band? You're going from city to city. Is it a lot of time spent in the car in transit? Yeah, it's a lot of time, but it's the time for us like to relax a little bit because, yeah, we, we, we just sleep some time in the car just to recuperate the energy and then play when we'll be in the venue. Yeah, it's not that bad because everyone has his own seat, and then yeah, it's it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just one month or two months. It's it's great. That's good. That's good. So tonight you'll yeah, be then, in Montreal. Yeah, and then it's like experience. Music give us a lot of experience to traveling in, in different places mm -hmm. and then talk with uh, like different people, uh, see different crowd that's like experience too it's like it's cool for me yeah and you get to meet a lot of different people have you met some interesting of people? of course yeah it's what they mean mm -hmm. yeah speaking of shows and touring you're a band who has played shows in africa as well as in the west I mean, it makes you unique because a lot of people have not played in for example niami in niger is there a lot of music live music in in your country in your city yeah yeah yeah, of course. But the time when we made that video, it's like the, be the beginning, the very beginning for a pandemic. Oh. And then everyone was scared. It's because that uh, if it's like now or after, that going to be like very, very, that's going to be a huge concert. Yeah. Oh, OK. So you're saying if there were no pandemic, a lot more people would have come to the show? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Well, again, last night was one of the largest shows I've ever been to. So that must have been. And and then we, the we just do it like very quiet. We never told, told someone to know yeah. that we're going to perform on in Miami. We just keep it like I'm just play the guitar and then the people starting to come. Yeah. I yeah. never tell someone we have concert or something like that. We just do it like like secret concert. Secret but concert. Every, yeah, but everyone is coming because I it was the pandemic times and then we don't have the cases for coronavirus, but even we we just everyone was scary, but yeah. Yeah. But is, the, just, is, is there any other reason mm -hmm. why you had to keep it a secret show? Because I've heard that your family was not so interested in the electronic, the electric music. 
is that sort of music do people enjoy that or is it an unusual thing <clears throat> that it was one that was one uh, that it's uh, when i was very young mm -hmm. now my people knows about why i do the music and then how i do it at, and then they know who i am Mm -hmm. That was the beginning. They does like me playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. It's different. In actually, I'm a man, and then I take my own responsibility. I know what I'm doing. Now, I'm from again. You're going to Vermont to play a concert. I am also from Vermont, and Vermont is a very very small place. There's a lot of farming. There's no big big buildings, big city, and um, you. I think you and I share this experience going from a very small place. And then being being introduced to the city. So for you, starting in Arlit, going to Niamey, and going to the West, what was that like for you? It's like something very big for me. It's like I feel it's coming from God, not me. Wow. You, you got me. And then I'm 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 very appreciated. I never know I will be in this place where I am. Yeah, actually. Because I'm a star, like just I play the guitar just with my free end, like like with free end just around me, and then now and I I am with the world, that something huge for me, and then but I like it, I like what I'm doing because mm -hmm. I make I make the people happy. It's what they need to do. It's a, it's the reason for me to be artist. It's like to share. The smile with everyone to give the smile to everyone it's what i need what does it feel like to be on stage and to see everybody moving and clapping to your music almost it's the best feeling for me so far it's what i need to do it's like the best thing for me it's to make everyone happy mm -hmm. i it's better to make someone upset or something like that. Because the music gives some, like, uh, gives some, uh, so, uh, the music, like, take care about stress and then give you, like, some feeling, very good feeling, dancing and forgot everything. You know? mm -hmm. It's what I need to do, and then I, I still do it. That when I see the crowd clubs and uh, smile and dancing, it's like what they need. It's better to see them cry, and then it's 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 what the it's it's how it's what the government do actually, yeah. But it's different in what the artists do. The artists make try to make everyone happy, dancing together, clubs, smiling. Yes. Yeah. It's what we do, but it's different in what some people in the world give. Like now in the world, when you are as strong, yeah. just gonna show you gonna just gonna show you have power. Because a lot of crime happening in Africa. It's uh, uh, yeah, they, we don't need that, but we don't have any power. And they, yes. they, yeah. It sounds like you're touching on the article that you wrote for the New York Times, which was called Can Colonialism Be Overcome, which of course I read and uh, and discussed with another music reviewer named Professor Sky. Um, but regardless, I read this article. Clearly, you're very passionate about it. Not only this, but you've lived through it. You've seen the town of Arlit be overcome by, you know, mining for uranium, um, which has been sent off to France. So I'm just going to let you talk about that. Um, that conflict. Why is that? Why is that so important to you? Uh, oh, it's very the my music. It's like something. I'm not just artist. I'm I'm like embassy for my community. I'm try to tell the world what is going on around me. It's that I feel it's my responsibility because a lot of people doesn't know about that. It's what I'm trying to do all the time. And then maybe the world gonna know, it's maybe we're gonna have some help about that. Maybe the world gonna change, something like that. I'm just, I just do my best. I, 
I can like close my eyes. I see what I'm seeing. Right now, you are almost, you're sort of on the opposite side of the world from Niger. It's a totally different time zone. Are you still able to feel connected to your country and to your family that's in Niger? I do because I never do three hours. I don't call my family. Oh, okay. You know what is going on in yeah. WhatsApp usually because they send me the message. I want to know what is the, how, is, how is the family all time that is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just my family around me, my neighbors, all who I know. Yeah. Yeah. And what is going on? And with then them? it's not just it's not just the music I do. I I have a lot of projects like I build the while for different places just to help the people to have the order to drink. Because we have some places the best for the people just to have water to drink. It's yeah. what I'm doing with part of my money in the music. Yeah. So you say you build wells, you build wells for tenants. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just for my town, in yeah. different places in, in around me. Yeah. What is the name of that organization? Or if, if there is uh, the name for uh, the name for I when I start, I start just me. And yeah. then now I build one organization just because maybe I gonna have someone want to work working like that, mm -hmm. and then he's very welcome. The name for that is Tagot. Tagot is like morning running. Okay. My language. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing to hear that you're helping people at home um, have something as basic as water while you're also spreading uh, just a lot of knowledge across um, America and Canada to people who have not heard this sort of music. So that's really wonderful. Okay. What I will be able to ask you in Niger, your country's exports are 50% gold, a lot of mining in Niger. What would you like to see change in your country? All what we have, it is in the hand for France. We have a lot of places that doesn't have the good electricity, even Niamey. We range the electricity in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Nigeria and we pay Nigeria, but we have uranium, we have gold, we have oil. And then we have some places we doesn't have no electricity, no school, no hospital. Uh, it's what's going on for something like 60, uh, 50, uh, 15, 50 years or yeah. 60 years. Mm -hmm. Six zero. Six zero. Yeah. 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 And you mentioned um, you connect with your family very often. What is your family up to this time of year? What is it like day to day for them living in Niger? Living in Niger, actually, it's very dangerous around me in my hometown because I live in Chunta Braden. That is something like uh, uh, 400 something kilometers in between Chunta Braden to Agadez. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of like problem in that way with Boko Haram, they kill the people. But no one knows about it because it's in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, five days ago, they killed something like 400 person, child, woman, old people. They killed more than 400 person. But but no one knows about it here in the United States and uh, Europe. No one knows about it because it's Africa. It's like nothing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like nothing. Yeah, I, I don't I have feel, don't have the words. For I that. feel it's I feel like it's killing 400 person in Africa. It's like it's like breaking 400 barum in the garbage. Like no one gonna knows. It's like nothing in the world. Well, yeah, that's. Yeah. It's what I feel me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, French military is it's in Niger. They have a lot of power. They have a lot of commando with them. America have his place in Niger in Agadez. They have. A lot of power, a lot of stuff like that. 
But Boko Haram killing the people at least in Niger. What I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's like they doesn't take care about us. It's like we are just like Africa. It's like garbage for the world. If you're going to test some medicine, you're just going to go to Africa and test it. If you have some, uh, if you have some doctor, does you work in good, uh, does you starting to work with the people, you're going to send them to Africa in the name for I going to help Africa. They're going to start to work with the people. They're going to train in with the people. And then after that, they're going to come back in his places to work. It's what is going on now. Um, may I ask you about your time on tour? What have you enjoyed in terms of maybe the food or the people that you've met in Canada? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday was the day we eat the very good food. I, I, I like like Ethiopian food and Indian food. I like it. I like uh, biryani and uh, bendu. It's my favorite. Good. Yeah. We got it, and then it was good for us history. Lovely. That's that's wonderful. I think you're really going to enjoy Montreal as well. Montreal has some fantastic food. I'm sure the venue is going to be good too. As far as artists in America, I know you. a lot of people reference, for example, Jimi Hendrix, and you are going to Woodstock, of course, one of the most famous places where Jimi Hendrix performed and played guitar with his teeth and all of this sort of stuff. You're also a left-handed guitarist. Um, is it going to feel very special to go to Woodstock for you? Sorry? Are you excited to go to Woodstock where Jimi Hendrix performed? I do. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Jimi Hendrix. I love Eddie Van Halen too. Right. I, I love Prince. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen speaking. Can of you Prince, ask me? Can you can you ask me in Canada who is my favorite artist? Absolutely, I can. You can always chime in as well. Who is your favorite artist in Canada, Mr. Mdu? That Celine Dion. Celine Dion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Montrealers are gonna love that. that I is... love Celine Dion when I was very, very young. Okay. She has magic vocals. That it's saying I can imagine how I love it. Is there a certain song that you really like from her? I love I'm Alive. Okay, I'm Alive. We might have to put that on your show. Uh, on I love it. And then I love, I love Titanic. I love Titanic. I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you, do your bandmates, do your bandmates like Celine Dion? What do they like for Canadian music? Sorry? Do the other people in the car, do they like Celine Dion too? Of course. Yeah. Everyone loves Celine Dion. <laughs> very good. Very good. What are you talking about? Everyone and... loves Celine Dion. Celine Dion's like, wow. Yeah. So you, you really like her voice, it sounds like. You like the way it sounds. I like I love Celine Dion. I love Celine Dion. It's what, what, what I'm going to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for performing this show. I wish you guys the best of luck. And I appreciate you also talking about France and all of those politics. That was really enlightening. Um, so thank you very much, Umdu, for coming on Tracks from Abroad. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you for calling us.